Aloha and welcome to Life Journaling and Dash for the 16th of February, the year's 2022. We're your hosts. I'm David. This is Yuvella. We also travel with two companions that are furry, Hana and Ollie, our golden retrievers, and they've been all over the world with us. Today we're pulling from Leviticus chapters 26 and 27, and also we're reading in Acts chapter 23. I'm calling this one Doing What is Right. And we'll get into that in a moment. But first, dear, would you lead us in prayer? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the day that you've given us. Thank you for giving us your word that we could read it daily and learn more about you. Thank you, Lord, for guiding our lives and guiding those who are listening. We thank you for all your blessings. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like to hear yours first. Well, I'm pulling from Acts chapter 23, verses 12 and 13, and I'm calling this one, Do What is Right. The next morning, some Jews formed a conspiracy and bound themselves with an oath not to eat or drink until they killed Paul. More than 40 men were involved with this plot. My observation, some people were not happy with Paul's teachings and decided on their own a plan to kill Paul. Government officials kept Paul under their protection so he could stand trial, but up to this point could not find that Paul did anything wrong. My application, here's where I'm going with this. As I read this, it occurred to me that the group of 40 people who took a vow to not eat or drink until they killed Paul meant well with their hearts, but they were stupid, <laughs> not following God's <laughs> words or wishes. The fact that they would not eat or drink until they went through with their plan shows they were very strong and they had strong convention convictions about what they were trying to do, but it didn't make it right. I need to make sure when I do things, they line up with God. The only way I know this, that they will line up with God, is if I continue to place his words, his scripture, in my heart and in my mind. My prayer, God, help me to guide myself and others to know you and follow your ways. Give me extra discernment so that I am not led away from you and follow my own fleshly desires. Help me stand firm in your ways when the world wants or chases after one thing and it doesn't really matter to you. It doesn't line up with what your wishes are. Amen. Pastor David. Interesting because I think mine supports what you said. This is on my mind right now because there is a denomination, there is a, a faith here in the Phoenix area and um, the person that does baptisms and has done baptisms for years okay this is not 10 years this is years he's been doing this he phrased his baptisms as we baptize you in the name of the father son and holy ghost and now his governing body has come back and said none of those are valid all these in his case he he uh, baptized babies so in his case um they're notifying all those people that were baptized as babies that the person used the wrong terminology and it's invalid. And he's resigned from being the leader of his flock and feels bad about the whole thing because he used the word, we baptize you instead of I baptize you. And as adults in our belief in our denomination or our thinking, um, you're asking to be born again or you're asking to be baptized as an adult. You're identifying that, that with yourself, your choice. But over what they believe is real, this terminology of we baptize you is wrong because the person was saying, I baptize you. This is not in, um, I want to say a liberal town. It, it really doesn't matter. It's just these people believe they are right and believe they have the authority to do this. And I'm just saying it's not that difficult. If you listening to this or watching this believe in God and say that you believe in God, that's a start. So that's where all this backstory is coming from. Interesting. Yeah. It's weighing on my mind that these people uh, have been told, we're sorry. Your baptism didn't count. <laughs> you can't prevent the Holy Spirit from reaching people. I'm sorry, that doesn't happen. 
they, in my mind, the person has to have a choice of accepting Christ. That's a whole other story. But, yeah, these people in the scripture today vowed not to eat or drink until they killed off Paul. Where does it say that in the Bible that we're supposed to do that? So, go ahead. Well, mine is being in the right place at the right time. Okay. And it's from Acts 16, uh, excuse me, Acts 23, verse 16. But when the son of Paul's sister heard this plot, he went into the barracks and told Paul. My observation, as you had said, more than 40 men were planning to kill Paul. They devised a plan and asked the Sanhedrin, which is the highest court of justice and the Supreme Council in ancient Jerusalem, to be part of the plan. So these are important people. The court was going to ask the commander to bring Paul to them so they could get clarification from Paul. However, on the way to court, these men were going to ambush and kill Paul. Paul's nephew happened to be in, the, in a place and overheard the plan. My application. Sometimes we say, just a second, sometimes we say we were in the right place at the right time. Well, I believe this to be God's divine directing of our lives. I'm going to give you a couple examples from my own life. I happened to be in the park yesterday when a woman arrived and was cussing up a storm. A young man with a toddler made a comment about there being children in the park, and the woman focused on him and was cussing him out. The man tried to protect his child's ears from hearing cussing. However, the woman continued to cuss. When we left, I walked up to the man and thanked him for being a good father. I, I wanted to encourage him. One time at Safeway, I saw a man cleaning the handles of the grocery carts. I thanked him and said, I know you may not get many thank yous, but I wanted to let you know what you're doing is appreciated. He smiled and said, I was the first one to thank him. Again, I wanted to encourage him. And then another time at Walmart, I saw a cleaning lady scrubbing a shelf to get a sticker off the shelf. Now she could have easily stacked something on top of it and no one would see the sticker. I thanked her for her hard work and told her how I noticed her attention to the small details. She told me I made her day by my words. I'm not bragging about what I did, but I want to point out that each day God puts us in places where we can be his spokesperson and encourage others. We just need to be aware of our surroundings and look for these opportunities. We can be like Paul's nephew and be in the right place at the right time. My prayer. Thank you, Lord, for giving me opportunities to encourage others. Help me li to listen to the nudges of the Holy Spirit and act upon your guidance. Help me to be diligent in filling my mind with your word through daily devotions or Christian music or godly sermons or godly podcasts. But help me to fill my mind with you and your word so then I can follow what it says in Philippians 4.8. Finally, brothers, whatever things are true, whatever things are honorable, whatever, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is any praise, think about these things. Amen. It's really good. And I've seen you do these things. And as you point out, we're not doing it sharing this on the podcast or in the vlog to brag about what we're doing because um, people aren't going to know everything that we do. Um, but we're trying to give examples of how people can encourage other people, that kind of thing. I want to ask you, where did you come up with this idea? Did someone do this for you? Um, I don't think it came from that. I just think it came from just reading my Bible and realizing that people need encouragement. And it's those small things, like this guy is taking the time to clean off these carts, and that's his job. But did ever, anyone ever say thank you? He needs to know that he's needed and loved and appreciated. Yeah, for me, 
where I draw this idea that we're supposed to do this is in the Bible it says that we're going to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And so that's where I say, okay, this is what I'm going to try to do. So the scripture is there for me saying some people water, some people weed, this kind of thing. But you are the hands and feet of Jesus. Tomorrow's reading is going to take us to uh, Numbers 1 and 2. That sounds like Sesame Street. But we're going to be reading in Numbers chapters 1 and 2. Also, Acts 24. And then I'll close this with prayer. Father God, thank you so much for each gold nugget that you give us um, each and every day that we spend time with you. I, I hope that those listening or those watching will be encouraged just like you've encouraged us today. We ask you to continue this and to walk with us in our lives to guide us and protect us. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm.